Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, July 3rd. I almost said January. Uh, beautiful sunny July day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. Got a very late start today. Long story, but I basically got up at 6, left the dog, let the dogs out, sat down in my chair, and next thing I knew it was 9 o'clock. I just conked out and staying up too late and uh, caught up with me. So, didn't get up till 9 today. Well, I didn't get out of the chair till 9 today. <laughs> That's okay. Tomorrow's a holiday. I can catch up. So, uh, today I got a lot of stuff to talk about, and I got to be honest with you, this is the second take because I accidentally, and let me make sure I didn't do this again. I didn't. I accidentally <laughs> recorded what was actually a 30 minute video that I had to edit down uh, afterwards. I did that video and I hit start streaming instead of start recording so it's gone <laughs> it went nowhere because I wasn't streaming at the time uh, so 30 minutes wasted but that's okay the, the sad thing is I really wanted to do some first impressions uh, and we'll get to that in a minute so let's uh, start off with the exciting news I got a new pipe you all will remember that I picked this up a while back this is my uh, Talbert Linear Britannia pipe, beautiful. I love the rustication on this. It's called called Raven's Wing, and uh, you know I love a billiard. But I was not gonna buy this pipe. I really wanted. I just was fixated on uh, the Talbert Linear Britannia Squat Bulldog with the, with this rust, rustication. I don't. I'm not a bulldog guy, but this pipe just jumped out when I was looking at Trevor's pipes. And so I, but this one became available. It was beautiful. I love billiards and I bought this instead. And I'm very happy with it. I've been smoking the heck out of it. It's all broken in now and smokes wonderfully. But then Trevor did a video on the squat bulldog and I bought one. So here's the, the pipe. See the, isn't that beautiful? That is just so, you can see it is a squat bulldog. That's much shorter than normal. It's got that beautiful rustication on it. It just feels so nice when you hold it. And, uh, man, it just, I just love this pipe. I can't wait to smoke it. I haven't yet, but, uh, yeah. It, if you're not familiar, I will link to, uh, Trevor's video on this pipe, not not this pipe, but this uh, style of pipe, um, and you should watch it. I, I love his videos. They're they're relatively short. They're very friendly, and he talks about the story behind the pipes. And it's just there's nothing else like it on on uh, YouTube these days, and it's really a lot of fun. So link below, and I'll also try to put one of those fancy card things in here. Uh, for you to check out Trevor and uh, his pipes. So, this is going to get put away. I'm going to start smoking this probably next week sometime. Uh, but today, what I really wanted to talk about was, um, surprisingly, Haunted Bookshop Cake. Um, you know, when this came out, I said, well, that's nice, but I pressed it myself. A couple of years back, I know what it tastes like. It tastes like on a bookshop. It didn't really change very much. Maybe mellowed out a little bit, but and it, you know, it was like one of these limited release things, which I'm just not interested in. Uh, it's great marketing for Cornell and Deal and for Ladasi, and I understand why they do it. And anything that keeps them afloat is is good. So I'm not opposed to it. It's just not my thing. So I didn't really pay much attention when it was released. It, of course, sold out overnight, which is, you know, great for them. But my buddy, James Stumbo, got in touch with me uh, the other day, and we chatted for a while. If you don't know James, he's a wonderful guy, and there'll be a link below to James' channel, and again, one of those fancy cards, if I remember, to put them in. And James said, you know, I bought this Haunted Bookshop cake, and I tried it. I'm not really a fan of Haunted Bookshop. Uh, so I decided to cut it up and send it out to some folks that know Haunted Bookshop and I'd like them to, you know, try it out, see what they think. And I said, well, okay, I, you know, I'm not going to turn down a chance to try it. 
why not? And, uh, you know, I really appreciate James reaching out to me about that. So he sent out this nice sample of Honor Bookshop cake. Um, there's been one bowl's worth taken off of this, and you'll uh, get to see that. You'll understand why, because I had to, I had to re-jigger the video. Uh, I had to remake the video, not re-jigger it. So this is the cake. It's it's broken up a bit, and uh, I've just got a piece of it here. But it is a ribbon. It's a little spongy, um, so not as hard pressed as something like. Uh, here's more. Not as hard pressed as something like Salt Dog, but you know, definitely more pressed than most of the Cornell and Deal um, cakes. They're more of a crumble cake usually. It very easily rubs out. Uh, I'm not going to do this because I'll drop it all over the floor, but well, here, I'll try to. You know, very easily can rub out to, to a ribbon cut. Hopefully you can see that happen. Um, so I, I did cut some of this, and I'll put a picture in here of what it looks like when you cut it. It crumbles up pretty readily when you cut it, unless you're cutting a really big chunk of it off. And uh, it's a little wet. Uh, I think they probably added some water to help with the pressing. So it's a little moist compared to the regular Honda Bookshop, but it, uh, yeah, it, it rubs out nicely and it, it, it packs well. Now, I've already done this, so that's unfortunate because I, again, didn't record the first video. But I will tell you that, you know, this is the original, my big tubbo Honda Bookshop. Um, you all know what this looks like. It's a nice ribbon cut. And it has this nice, musty, vinegary smell to it. And that's very typical of Haunted Bookshop. Uh, I'd know it anywhere. The cake has that same smell to it. So it's, it's got that musty, vinegary smell. It doesn't really seem to be changed much. Now this pipe, the Ligne Britannia, actually has some uh, Haunted Bookshop in it from earlier because I just smoked like half a bowl and I'm gonna light that up and we'll talk a bit about Haunted Bookshop. So I've never done a video on Haunted Bookshop. I've been smoking it for a really long time. Um, and the reason I've never done a video on it is there's so many videos out there about it that I didn't think I could add anything. But in the interest of comparison I'll talk about it a bit. So I started smoking this blend back in the 90s, um, long before I knew there was a YouTube pipe community. I was living in Atlanta at the time, smoking a lot of English blends. Uh, number 10 Downing Street was my daily smoke, and Number 10 Downing Street had ceased production. So I was trying to find something to replace that. I heard about this company in Pennsylvania called Cornell & Deal, a little family-run, out-of-the-garage kind of business. And people were raving about it on uh, Usenet. Alt.smokers.pipe, I think, was the name of the form. And this was, you know, there was a web at the time, but it was very primitive. And there was email at the time, but Cornell and Deal didn't use email. So if you wanted to order, you had to call them. So they had a website where you could see their blends and, and you know, there's a little description of each one. And they had a deal where you could get, I think it was five one ounce samples for $20 or something like that. They also had a really neat service back then where if you bought a pound of anything they made, and they had probably 50, 60 blends in the catalog at the time, you buy a pound of anything they make and they would press it for you into a brick. And uh, so you could have gotten pressed haunted bookshop back then. So I went through the catalog and I picked out my five blends, which were all English Balkan type things. And I called up Cornell and Deal, and a woman answered the phone who turned out to be Patty Tarler, Craig's wife. Uh, Craig and Patty started this company. They actually bought it from, I don't remember the full story, but they bought it, it uh, ran it out of their garage for a long time. and. Uh, I said, you know, I want to order some blends, and, and Patty said, well, Craig really likes to talk to new customers, so give me your number, and I'll have him call you back. 
he was out in the garage doing tobacco stuff. So uh, 20, 30 minutes later, phone rings and uh, it was Craig Tarler. And I said, you know, I really want to get these blends. And he said, well, let's talk a little bit about what you like and all that. And we talked for a good half hour. I mean, it might have been a little less, might have been a little more. I don't really remember, but it was a very pleasant conversation. And I'm, those of you that know me, uh, you know, know me personally, know that I'm a bit of an introvert. I don't really like making phone calls. Um, in fact, I rarely call people, and that's unfortunate because I got a lot of friends that I like to talk to, but I'm just not somebody that calls people. I always feel like I'm going to interrupt them if I call them. Of course, when I get the call, I never feel that, so it's odd. No, everything not right up here. Anyway, phone rings, Craig Tarler. Uh, he said, hey, I heard you're interested in our tobacco. Why don't you tell me a bit about what you're smoking now? And I told him about number 10 Downing Street. I told him about uh, Bengal Slices. We talked for a while. And I told him which blends I was interested in. He said, you know, I really wouldn't recommend those. Uh, why, why don't you, for number 10 Downing Street, I'd recommend Constellation. I think it was Constellation. This was a long time ago. And he said, uh, you know, maybe there was another, like a more Balkan type blend. I don't remember. Uh, and then he said, you know, I really think you should try Burley. I said, I don't know. I never, never had Burley. Um, I, I, I had, that's not true. I had Burley, but it was only over the counter Burley. And I did enjoy it because uh, I smoked a fair amount of like Carter Hall, Sugar Barrel, that kind of stuff. But the English had become my thing. And I said, you know, I just really like the flavor of the English and all that. And he said, well, those those blends are okay that you're describing, but they don't really truly represent what Burley can be. And I said, well, okay, I'll try some Burleys then. And he listed three of them. I don't remember any of them except for Haunted Bookshop. Um, I think there was one in there that it was like a bagpipe or something or the other. But when I look at their website, there's like a bagpiper dream, which is an aromatic, and that's not it. So, I don't know, maybe they, they change blends over time. But, Haunted Bookshop was one of them. I got these blends in. It was a wonderful discussion, and I really enjoyed talking to him. Uh, and he changed my life, because, where's my tamper? I, you know, I immediately smoked the Constellation, and it's a pretty reasonable substitute for number 10. Uh, but I didn't need one after that, because... I moved on to the Burley blends. I don't know which one I tried first, but when I tried Haunted Bookshop, I said, wow, this is amazing. This is all the stuff I like about Burley. From those blends like Carter Hall and Prince Albert and Sugar Barrel and all that. But it's, it's, it's good tobacco flavor. It's not cased. You know, there's no topping on it. Uh, cased with water. And it had, and it has to this day been very consistent. This nice deep burly that that is wonderful, but burly can be harsh. And somehow Bob Ronowski blended this in a way that there's multiple burlies in it, and then there's this, uh, I believe it's a fermented Red Virginia that just melds so well, and then just the right amount of perique. This thing has so much flavor in it. You got this this deep caramel Red Virginia sweetness running in the background. You got all this nutty, woody burley on top of that, and the perique just explodes in your mouth. It's a wonderful blend. And I was hooked from the first bowl. I didn't smoke a lot of English after that. And then I went through a cigar phase where I was really just smoking cigars. And when I came back to pipes, English blends didn't work anymore. I, I couldn't stand the lot kit. But this has been a constant. So I love this stuff. So I pressed it, I don't know, about four years ago. I haven't gone back and found that video, let alone watch it. I also haven't watched any videos about Haunted Bookshop 
cake because I just didn't think I was going to try it and wasn't that interested in it. But James was kind enough to send me a sample. And again, I have smoked about halfway through this pipe. By the way, the pipes I chose, I, I chose the Ligne Britannia Billiard and my Demi Lavotte that I made. And the reason I chose them is that they're eerily similar in bowls. Uh, and the shanks are about the same length. I don't want to dump the ash all over here, but they're about the same length. The stems obviously are different. Uh, that wasn't planned. I made this before I saw this. I, it just turned out that way. But because the bowl size was so similar and the shank length, I thought these would be good pipes to compare the two. And that seems to have worked out. So this, uh, the, the Demi Lovat has the Honda Bookshop cake in it. And I'm going to relight this again about halfway through. And this was a surprise. And by the way, I, I, if I haven't put the picture in yet, I'll put a picture in here of how I cut the cake. And it cut very easily. And I did thin cuts, and it just crumbled as I cut it. Very easy to rub, rub out. Uh, I let it dry while I... So in the original version of this video, I actually lit up the Haunted Bookshop original, and then I cut it and let it dry while I was talking about the Haunted Bookshop original. And this was a revelation. This was a surprise. I don't know what they did. But this is very different. Very different from my experiment of a couple of years ago. So the Perique is there and it's a little more mellow, just a little bit more mellow. Um, the Virginia is there, but it's hard to find. It's sweet. But it's not that deep caramel. And here's the surprising part. The Burley is gone. You cannot taste Burley in this blend. This is almost like, I hate to say this, so well, let, let me be blunt, I don't like this. Um, I would not buy this again. I'll smoke what James sent me. I, I want to, you know, get to know it a bit more. But I wouldn't buy it. And that's me my personal opinion. Again, I haven't watched other videos about this. I, I will after this because I'm curious to find out if I'm the oddball. But this is like smoking black Cavendish with Perique. That's the, the closest thing I can think of to this. Not that I've ever smoked black Cavendish with Perique, but I've smoked both of them independently, and that's what this reminds me of. Very smooth. It's It's got little sweetness on it and the creek is there very creamy a lot of smoke feels good in your mouth but it's not haunted bookshop now interestingly you know haunted bookshop is a polarizing blend there's people that love it and there's people that hate it i love it I hear it tastes like uh, ashes. I've never had it taste like ashes. Uh, I think folks that have that problem are probably smoking it too fast. I hear that it smells, the room note is like cigarettes. I've never noticed that. I smoke this around my wife all the time. She's never complained about it. She actually likes it. Not this, the original Haunted Bookshop, I'm sorry, I should be more clear.
but it's a polarizing blend. So I'm guessing that the people that hate Haunted Bookshop would actually like Haunted Bookshop cake and vice versa. If you're somebody that loves Haunted Bookshop, you would probably say, why am I smoking this? And again, these are impressions. I'm not being critical of Cornell and Deal or of uh, their blending or marketing or anything like that. You know, if it works for them, God bless them. And if you like this, God bless you. Uh, the most wonderful thing in the world about pipe smoking, I believe, is that two people can sit down and smoke the same exact thing, even in, in the same pipe, and say... This is good, this is bad. You have completely different opinions. And after all, we can only give opinion because we bring so much to the to the tobacco. So I hate reviews. I, I never have done a review and I hate when people call them reviews because it's just silly. You know, you, you don't review Van Gogh's Sunflowers or Vermeer's uh, Woman with a Pearl Earring. You don't review those things. You, you can critique them. You can say that, you know, my understanding of art is such and this falls within that or falls outside of that. Or there are things about it that, you know, the composition is not something I like. But you can't review it. You can't because there's no standard. You can review a car because you can talk about you know, mileage, miles per gallon, and uh, zero to 60, and all that good stuff, torque and everything, horsepower for some reason. You can't review something that's subjective, and tobacco is subjective. So in summary, love Haunted Bookshop, not a fan of Haunted Bookshop cake. But you should try them both. Make up your own mind. All right, well, this has been a long video, and i got to do some editing because I want to put a picture in and put the cards in. So I'm going to be getting off soon. Um, Shop news, the organization continues. It's looking good. We've got a lot of work to do still, a lot of things to organize. We've got to find space to organize things. I need shelves, more shelves. Uh, unfortunately, I think the uh, pictures over here that you can't see right now uh, that are prominent during my live stream are going to have to move somewhere. And it may be out of shot because I need the wall space is becoming very valuable. Uh, but that's okay. We'll, we'll get through it. And, uh, yeah, the, all the things I normally do on a Sunday, I'm going to do tomorrow because it's so late in the day. Anyway, let me let you get back to your Sunday. I hope you all enjoy it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and a happy 4th of July to everybody here in the, in the U.S. Happy Canada Day to all you uh, Canadian folk up north. And uh, happy Sunday to everybody else. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And until we speak again... We'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.